We're gonna jump inside of Unity, and I wanna show you what we worked on last night. I worked pretty late last night after the kids went to bed, and Felipe, the 3D artist, has also done some incredible models, so I wanna show those to you. Guys, things are starting to look very much like Bioshock, which I'm thrilled about, because I love that game. We're also going to start a new level today. This is gonna to be the first level of this game, okay? Like I said, we're starting father over, so we're really starting fresh with a new level, okay? This level is gonna be inspired by the lighthouse level in Bioshock, the very the very first introductory level, okay? Um, so we're definitely gonna be inspired by that. Really quick before we do that, I just wanna welcome new students to the full-time game dev program. Huge, huge round of applause to Wajietch. I'm so sorry, I don't know how to say that. Uh, Eric H and Josh, guys, this program is gonna really help you out. I really believe in it. Um, and I just wanna thank you guys for joining the program yesterday and using those remaining coupon codes left. And by the way, if you do wanna join, there are three codes left, just three codes left. You're gonna get 50% off the massive program. It's gonna take you probably two months or more to finish this program. It's almost like a semester of school or maybe half of a semester. So it's definitely worth the price. It's a premium program. You're gonna learn how to launch your game, how to launch uh, and hit the Steam front page, how to secure funding, six figures in funding from Kickstarter or publishers without even finishing your game. And I've actually done this multiple times, so I show you how to do it. You're also gonna learn 2D art. You're gonna learn how to reach out to streamers. These are free for this bundle this week. You're gonna learn how to reach out to streamers as well and also get this free course here, Easy 3D. You're also gonna get a free T-shirt, which is awesome because, well, I ordered one as well for me because <laughs> I think it looks pretty cool. So be sure to click the link below, guys. I have 3,000 students worldwide, a private Discord server. And by the way, if you're a student, let us know in the chat and I'll say hello as best as I can. Anyway, click below if you wanna take advantage of those remaining coupon codes. They will probably sell out today or tomorrow, so be sure to join the program if you're interested. All right, guys, uh. let's go. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me show you. Well, that's a very violent scene to start with. Let me show you what we worked on last night. Man, I had such a blast last night working. And by the way, um, James Henderson says, I'm a student. Uh, James, what do you think about the program so far? Um, I really wanna know. It's uh, always kinda weird asking for your thoughts live, but <laughs> what, what are your thoughts on the program? Um, okay, so things are looking really, really cool. So obviously guys, we're not gonna make Bioshock. That would be a moronic decision because guess what? You're not gonna, you're not gonna make Bioshock because you don't have you know, $10 million or whatever, $100 million to make a game. Um, we have a smaller budget, um, but uh, yeah, so we're going with a more simplistic look, but it's gonna have that Art Deco feel, okay? So I just wanna show you really quick what we made yesterday. I learned reflection probes, okay? So that was pretty easy. All you do is just put a reflection probe on the ground and then you bake it and that's that. So the reflection probe is this big old box here, and all it does is it just finds information on the walls and then it just translates it to any surface that's you know, shiny, basically. Um, we've also, this is really, really cool. Um, we also, Felipe yesterday, um, made some really, really cool updates. So for example, we have this rounded couch that he made. I really like it. So we're just basically Googling Art Deco and, uh, we're seeing what it looks like in hotels, right? So all you gotta do is just Google it. So I'm gonna couch round maybe. We need to get all these, or at least I need to understand how the uh, the system is working here, where everything is stored. But I've also got bake um, automatically occurring. So I'm gonna turn that off really quick. So we don't want lighting to automatically, excuse me, <laughs> got the hiccups, uh, uh, automatically bake. Um, so, and it looks totally different, that's the thing. Real-time lighting looks totally different than baked lighting. So at the end of the day, when you're putting your scene together, just know that if it's in real-time lighting and there's not ba lights baking right away, 
um, automatically, it's gonna look different when you bake. So eventually you need to turn on auto bake and set the texel size to like one or two um, so that it'll, it'll do it pretty quickly. Um, but let's go ahead and hit play. I wanna show you guys. Um, um, let me turn that down for you. Okay, so uh, beautiful, cool looking couch, right? Very simplistic, very simplistic rounded couch. And what's cool about it is we, could, we also can attach pillars to it. So we have a round pillar where is my pillar? Chair round pillar, there it is. No, that's a chair. Um, where are you? It's probably next to it in the folder. Well, 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 let me look. We have a bunch of stuff. Uh, we have this cool cart, this hotel cart that Felipe made. He's really talented, guys. Look at just how simplistic, he, he makes things look so good, um, but it's so simple and so clean. I love it, it's super stylized. Um, so for some reason I can't find the pillar, which I don't know why, but we have this cool chandelier that he made, really cool. And this is just using emissive textures, okay? So one of the like, key components of this game that's making it look so pretty is just the glow, right? The glow of everything. Um, and the emissive textures. So that's really what we've been working on. Um, today, I actually figured out how to get enemies, finally, finally figured out how to get enemies to jump on to surfaces. I wanna show you how we do that. So we're using AI agents, okay? And what he does is he finds an area where he can jump off of a ledge. See? So he could jump up, and then he can come jump down. This is huge because originally you could just stand on like elevated surfaces and just farm the enemies, like bang, 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 bang. But now they jump onto surfaces. The way that that's happening, for those of you who are, you who are curious, it's a real pain in the butt and I'm not a huge fan of Unity's way of doing this because I wish that in the nav mesh uh, <coughs> baking, you could just tell it to bake jump zones, but you can't, um, which is really frustrating. At least I've never been able to find a way. Um, so I'm going to turn on auto generate for the lighting because it's really looking bad and it's just driving me crazy. But what we've got, and those circles are, are light probes, by the way, or uh, reflection probes or whatever. Um, what are they called? Something light probes or whatever. Um, but what we've got here is we've actually got a folder or an empty game object with a bunch of children, and they're just nav mesh links, okay? These, these nav mesh links are actually auto-generated thanks to a script I downloaded online. I just Googled auto nav mesh generator and it will generate these nav mesh links and these are just little planes. And the enemy is gonna know to move towards these planes and he's going to slide up them, okay? But there's gonna be a, par a, a parabola effect so it looks like he's jumping and then we just play the jump animation. The real pain of making a 3D game, guys, the biggest pain of making a 3D game is the stacked elements that that require you to bake things, okay? So like baking reflection probes, baking nav mesh agent, um, or just nav meshes for different kinds of enemies, right? We have two kinds, we have flyers and then we have walkers. So I have to bake the nav mesh for two of those. You have to bake the lighting, right? You have to bake the, the light probes. Um, and then you have to, basically generate all these nav mesh links. It's kind of a pain in the butt, and I have a feeling, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I have a feeling that Unreal is not like this. Um, I'm not moving to Unreal, but I just have a sneaky suspicion that it's not as painful. Um, but all that said, it's working out just fine. I have all the tools necessary to just click one, two, three, four, five, and get everything baked and solidified. It just was a real, it was a really steep learning curve figuring out all this. And by the way, you know, we have we have spiders um, as well. And there's a couple of enemy types I don't want to show you just yet. Um, but we have spiders. These are tough. These are tough. Um, so he will jump up. Look at that. Isn't that cool? The problem is he doesn't face you when he jumps, so I'm still figuring that out. But he knocks stuff over, and he's scary, dude. I love him. Woo! Look at him jump. I love it. It's great. So I'm really happy with how things are looking. All right, guys. So 
so that's what we've done, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna create a new level. Now what I wanna do is actually create a template of a scene so that we can create new scenes whenever we want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear out this scene, everything, everything except for the character controller. And by the way, those of you just joining us, there are three coupon codes left today to join full-time game dev guys. This does support my live streams, okay? It supports the game's development. I have to pay a team, and one of the ways I do that is, well, when people join my course. So that really means a lot to me when you do join, but more importantly, it is an investment in your future, and I can confidently say that because I get so many good reviews. I have 3,500 students worldwide. Um, great reviews, people love the program, and if you're a student, feel free to say hello in the chat. Um, let us know what you think about the program. Okay, so we're gonna take the FPS controller. Um, we're gonna take the, I'll say, let's let's go ahead and bring, keep the nav mesh link game object. I'm gonna put that actually, um, at the very least we're gonna make a prefab out of this. The nav mesh link um, generator. I'm gonna delete all of the, the nav mesh links, okay? I also think we're gonna need a reflection probe generator. So we're gonna put that up here as well. We're gonna need that for our template, okay? Uh, no, that's, yep, yeah, yeah, probably. Um, and then also the uh, light probe group. I know we're gonna need that. These are all the elements that every single scene is going to require, okay? We're gonna put all of these inside of our startup, okay? We have a big old startup game object. And it's just basically everything that a level will need to start is included in this. Um, this is not going to, this is gonna be, these are things that are unique to, well, they're not persistent game objects, okay? So everything in the level startup is not persistent. It will be destroyed once a new level loads. The player, however, will, will be persistent, as will the game manager. So let's find the game manager and then we're gonna delete everything else, okay? Okay, there he is. And obviously, guys, you wanna keep your scene clean. This is just a test scene, so it's a big old mess. Um, I think that's everything, guys. Great. And also the nav mesh flyer. There is a nav mesh, ooh, and links. Okay, so there's a nav mesh flyer that I know we're gonna need on every level, okay? So we're gonna include that as well. We're gonna put all of these inside of the level startup, but I'm gonna group them together. Um, actually, let's just drag them in. I don't think, I don't think honestly, yeah. I don't think that we'll need, uh, the reflection probe, not so much, because not every, not every level is gonna need reflection probes. But nav mesh links, absolutely. Light probe groups, absolutely. And nav mesh flyer, absolutely. So we're gonna apply all of these, okay, to our level startup. Um, that's awesome, good, good, good. Level startup is zeroed out, and that's good. I would say the first person character controller should be zeroed out as well, position-wise. Um, and yeah, it's child should be zeroed out as well. So we're gonna make sure we o apply all the changes to that. And <clears throat> that's about it, guys. Um, where did everything go? Nope, that's it. Okay, so this is gonna be our template. Um, we can delete everything else. I'm gonna save this scene though, and then we can delete everything else. Let's go. Awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, and I'm gonna go into the level startup, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove any nav mesh links, I'm gonna clear those. I'm gonna just delete all of these light probes, so I'm gonna select all, delete selected. That should delete all of our light probes, it did not. What's that? There we go, okay. And then our nav mesh flyer, we can clear the bake. Okay, come on, sometimes it doesn't clear. Okay, so we've got this blank scene here, so we need to make sure we're saving this as a template. The reason we wanna do this is so that we can create new levels really, really fast, and it includes all of the items we need in it, okay? We have our first person character controller, we have all of our level startup stuff. That's our music, our sound managers, our post-processing effects, our fog, all that stuff. And then we have our game manager, which stores data, okay? That's all of the stuff we need to start up a scene. What I'm gonna do is gonna do file, save as scene template, but let's make sure that everything's applied. 
Got all of our prefabs are good to go. So let's go ahead and file, save as scene template. And I'm just gonna um, create a new folder and call it templates, scene templates. And this is going to be um, scene template uh, dark. Honestly, that's fine. That's fine, just scene template, that's it. Okay, so we now have a scene template. So what we can do is, I believe, create a new scene. Um, how do you create a new scene? There we go. New scene. And there is our, I just renamed you to scene template. Can I edit you? Edit. Let's find out where it was. That's it right there. See, that's weird. Uh, for some reason it didn't save in a folder. Isn't that weird, guys? Let's rename this to scene template. We have a bunch of crappy scenes here, ton of random stuff here. So what I'm gonna do is create a new folder and I'm gonna call this, wait for it, old. <laughs> and then we're gonna drag all of that stuff in there. Um, the sandbox isn't, well, it really is. Um, so Sodom Hollow, good, good, good. All this stuff we can move in there except for our scene template. So everything's old. We're gonna delete all that stuff soon. But this was good, you know, we created all, the, all those scenes for a reason. We, we, we wanted to test and make sure everything was looking good. We did all these different kinds of layouts and everything feels really solid right now. So we're ready to start, okay? Um, all right, so if I hit play, I shouldn't get any errors except for a few, that's okay. But now I'm falling, okay, good. That's what we wanted. Looks like our guns are reversed for some reason. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new terrain because this is gonna be a terrain level. So a game object, 3D object, terrain. Okay, I like to position it negative 500, negative 500. So it's really centered, okay? That's something that annoys me about terrain is the, the pivot point is on the edges. I wish it, this was actually zeroed out, but I'm sure they have a stupid reason, but that's great. Um, it's zeroed out. The player is zeroed out. I believe we need what we need to do with the player is just move him up just a bit. So we're gonna put him up to five. And then when I hit play here, I'm good to go. So, so far guys, everything looks really good. This tower we're gonna remove. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. The tower looks really cool, I understand. I love it too, but we're actually gonna have a 3D tower, and that's gonna be something that Felipe's gonna be working on. Um, it's gonna be a huge hotel, Art Deco hotel, going into the sky, all right? Okay, so what I wanna do is go to our light box, or our sky box, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder, and this is gonna be called old, <laughs> and these will never be deleted. We'll be shipping the game with these folders. Um, and I'm gonna take, all of these old sky boxes here. This one I'm gonna to rename to um, Skybox. Uh, <laughs> Stormy Skybox. Stormy Green. I, I think Stormy Skybox is fine. Uh, because I don't really like naming things based on the level, okay? So it was originally Sodom's Hollow. Um, I don't really wanna name things based on levels anymore. Why is that? Who knows why I don't want to um, say, uh, name things based on levels. I don't want to name things based on the enemy name. Why is that? Does anybody know? All right. Does anybody know? Reusability. That's a good. That's a good way to put it. What does that mean? It's, it's not necessarily reusability, actually. I'm gonna save this scene, save as scenes. And this is gonna be, watch, I'm not gonna name it a name. I'm gonna call it level weight one. That's, that's, that's what we're gonna name it. Um, scalability, sure, sure. Um, reusing, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, it, really what it is for me, and all those are true, really what it is for me is I don't ever keep something the same name ever it always changes it's good and, and i know i'm going to name this level in my head and then tomorrow 
it'll be something else. So for me, I change things a lot and it's just part, my style has always been, and it's not the best. It's very like expensive the way this works, but my style has always been, um, figure it out as I go, figure out what this game is. Because I gotta say, I have tried so many times to be strategic about things and it always ends up, I can't really put a finger on what I'm making until I make it, right? I have to figure out what I'm making by making it. Does anybody else sympathize with that? I have to figure out what I'm making um, in order to know what I'm making. Wait, what am I even saying? I have to make it to know what I'm making. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we've got uh, our scene here. Um, we got some mountains, but then this is going to be the ocean. Okay. Beautiful ocean. In fact, I would argue that we don't need mountains at all. We just need an ocean. I want it to feel very empty. Okay. Very foggy, very empty. So that's that's good enough for me, man. Um, Great, 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 great. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Photoshop. Now that we've got this simple scene set up, right, with our terrain, looks great already. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Photoshop. Now this level is a very basic level. It's like maybe five minutes long. What we're gonna do, and this isn't how we're gonna lay out levels for interiors. Interiors are gonna be a whole complicated process. But for something like this, I'm just gonna do a very simple sketch, okay? I know I want an island, a tiny little island, with a hotel smack dab in the middle, okay? I know that I want sort of rocks here. I want rocks here. I want some kind of dock here. And I want a boat to arrive at the dock, okay? So it's gonna be some kind of ferry, kind of like Shutter Island. Does anybody remember the intro to Shutter Island? Did you, Derek, did you watch Barbarian? Oh, it's great. I love Barbarian, one of my favorite movies. It was so fun. I wasn't a huge fan of the ending. I won't tell you what it was. I didn't really like the ending, but it was fun. All right. So I kind of want this to be elevated so you can see it, okay? And then we're gonna have a path that goes up to here. Let's make it a little bit bigger so that we have room to draw. So this is our island. Look at that circle. That wasn't bad. Look, I did that with a mouse. Um, we're gonna have a dock. We're gonna have the ferry arrive at the dock, nice and snug. You'll jump off the ferry and we shall have a kind of a beach here, kind of like Kirby's Dreamland. Or not Kirby's Dreamland, uh, Kirby, the, the latest one where you start on the beach. Um, and then there's gonna be a path like this. Mansion or the hotel will be huge. Like this thing is gonna be so daunting when you look at it. And there's going to be a locked door here, okay? And um, how about a locked gate here? So just a regular door here, a locked gate here with like a, a speaker that says, please insert your golden ticket. And you're like, I don't have a golden ticket. So you got to go find a dead body that has a golden ticket, okay? So it'll be a path like this. Please insert your golden ticket. You can't, right? There's going to be a, bre uh, a breakable area. There's a there's going to be a fence system all the way down the side, okay? Just like this, <clears throat> and there'll be a sign over here. And then there'll be a fence system all the way along here, but you'll be able to go like on the beach and into some woods and stuff. So let's, let's make sure that's clear. So like that, and then we'll have like trees. Whoosh, whoosh, 
rocks, trees. And then you'll be able to go under this and sort of go outside this gate system. So there's our gate system and it'll just wrap around and we'll probably just lock the player to here, honestly. I know this looks terrible. <clears throat> lock the player here. Let's create some vari variability here though, maybe a place here as well. And um, this will be keyed, or this will be a key. No, no, no. <clears throat> um, this will be like a lever, and it opens a gate. The lever itself will be in here. Okay, we'll have some big trees. It'll be a cemetery. With a lever, you press the lever, it opens the gate and then there will be a key in here. And this will be some jumping. We'll have some jumping here to teach jumping. So this teaches crouching, this teaches jumping, and this will teach, I feel like, honestly though, there needs to be like a <coughs> getting the ax over here. So this is gonna be the ax, okay? So you get the ax over here, <coughs> you sort of have to Break the wood here, that lever opens that. Then you break some more wood here, get the key. Over here is gonna be like just secret gems. <clears throat> and then you can go into the hotel. The key is actually gonna be a ticket, which you insert into the door, okay? So that is what we're going to do. That is what we're going to do. Ready guys? Let's go. So right off the bat, we need water. Um, I wanna be able to get that pretty quick. And by the way, guys, we're not gonna be worried about how things look right now, all right? We're only worried, we're only worried about a very fun experience walking around. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and raise the terrain. We're gonna do a very simple Guys, remember, start in the abstract. What does that mean? It means start very simplistically. You can add details later. So we're just gonna do a little pump. Boom, boom, boom. Close, but no cigar. Click up again. Increase the opacity. Smack dab in the center. Boom, 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 boom. We're getting there. Let's select our terrain, press F. That way we can Actually, let's do it with our, our character controller. That way we can zoom in and out better. Okay, let's keep going. Go to top view here. Boom, 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 boom. Almost. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Now we can position our player here and take a look. So it's really hard to get an idea of scale, right? Right off the bat. And we need directional lights, by the way. So let's throw in a directional light. Nothing crazy. Um, let's turn on lighting here. Uh. And I'm gonna rotate it so we have a nice contrast here. It's basically night. It, it's gonna be like 6 p.m. Very good. Awesome. Okay, let's grab some water. I do believe that I have some water on the Unity Asset Store. And by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember if you want to join the program and support Father's development, but more importantly, support your future, there's probably one or two codes left below to join the program. 3,000 students worldwide, massive program. going to take you two months. You're going to learn everything I've learned about making games and starting your own studio. All right, Unity Asset Store. <clears throat> Let's take a look here. Mm -hmm. I'll show you my screen, one sec. I have a million assets. I have 202 assets, which is ridiculous. 
That's a big mistake. <clears throat> Shouldn't have bought all of them. But we do have Toony Water. And we might actually have it in our folder. Let's take a look. We do. <clears throat> we do. Stylized Water Shader. Do you have any prefabs? No. Why is the skybox in there? Oh, no, it's here. So I don't know what this is. I'm going to delete it. We don't use it currently in this build. So let's go ahead and download our asset from the asset store. We have water. Let's take a look. And I hope it supports URP. I really, really do. Um, come on. There it is, stylized water shader. It was last updated this year, that's good. So let's see, is it URP? Because we are in universal render pipeline. Pipeline compatibility. Oh crap, we're gonna need to buy a new one. Um, unless I have some other ones, let's take a look. Water. <coughs> Excuse me guys. Okay, we don't. So we need to go to stylized water. We need to buy some today. Another asset we're buying, right? Stylized URP water. Look at that. Check it out. It's got a ton of great reviews, so we have to buy it. Although we do have this one. The shader graph. Well, how much is the other one? 30 bucks. You guys want to just go ahead and buy it? It's $20 today. Yeah, we have so many features. I, I love when I have the ability to change things. Uh, so we're going to change things. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. And also we could, you, we could utilize our reflection probe knowledge now. That's good. Uh, let's buy this. One second, almost there. Some one of you said it looks too Zelda y. Well, I will say, have you ever have you ever looked at Bioshock, especially Bioshock Infinite? Um, that game has a very stylized look. And we're definitely inspired by Bioshock, but our game is stylized as well. So I think that we're gonna actually be okay here. So let's download this. <laughs> Import all of this crap. And let's make our world. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find the folder. And I'm going to stick it. Where is it? There it is. I'm going to stick it in the art folder and then the asset store folder. Okay. <clears throat> that way everything's nice and organized. Let it reload our script assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put a big old plane of water. Just It doesn't have to look perfect because we're me and Felipe, once we get this blocked out, me and Felipe are going to go in and just tweak, 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 make this level look freaking incredible. It's going to it's gonna need to be the, one of the most beautiful levels in the game, but it's only 10 minutes long, if that, right? Um, so stylized water, there it is. Let's just throw a prefab in there. I know we want to use an ocean. Now let's double check something here. Okay, so we can just scale it. We're gonna do a thousand by a thousand, not Y, by a thousand. There we go. Already looking great, okay? Now the question is, does it support fog? If it doesn't support fog, we're in for a rude, rude awakening. It does, good, okay. So there it is. Let's position the player right on the edge. Isn't this fun, guys? Let's go ahead and grab our character, and all that we gotta do to position him where the camera is is press Control shift f And, but that's gonna set his rotation to the camera rotation. We don't want that, so zero out his rotation, and then hit play. That's great. I love that. That's all we need, guys. We don't need to go do anything crazy right now. 
Um, let me message Felipe really quick. I, I'm going to tell him that we need a dock. We need a dock. And I'm live right now. Sorry. I'm being curt. We need a dock. And rocks for the ocean for the for the beach and we also need i think we already have wooden pillars okay so this is gonna be our start position and we're gonna dig a path okay this might actually be a little too tall so what we're gonna do and let's go ahead and make a start position here so what i'm gonna do is just make a i believe we have a wood post or a wood pillar I'm gonna just start placing things so I don't get confused so there's a wooden pillar this is gonna be the dock and uh, let's go back to my screen sorry guys so I'm just gonna create a wood pillar like this, like this, like this, and probably position it down to about, right about, just above the ocean, see? So that we can get out on the dock. I'm gonna just put some simple platforms. Okay, so this is gonna be our dock, and then I'm gonna go to our building blocks. We actually have a block called uh, pla a platform block, and it's a four by eight. It's an eight by eight, which is great. That's exactly what we need. And I'm just gonna position these. And by the way, guys, we're, since we're creating a game that relies heavily on platforming, we want things to be nice and clean, okay? All the sizing being very, very clean. Let's make sure these are all set to static, because they're not gonna move, except for the platform. No, 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 we're good. Let's set all those to static. <clears throat> and now we can go ahead and position our dock corners right here. This one, same thing, right there, and then shift it over by one or by four. Delete, delete, and we'll, we'll push these up, okay? By 2.5, so we're using snapping, okay? So we're actually moving it over by eight. One more. Okay, nice and clean, guys. Nice and clean. So this is just blocking out a level. And it's okay to use some assets that you've created to block out your level if you know for certain that they're going to be used. I think that's okay. Um, let's grab this and then just position it right there. Is it good old? It's nice and clean. Good. That is up. We don't want that. These all are up, so we're going to bring them down by a unit size of one unit. Come on, Thomas. Yeah, we need to keep this on, on, on a plane of four. So this is on the wrong plane. So knock it down. There we go. Up one. In fact, yes, we're good, okay? And it, I think we should probably do it at negative 10. Um, so it's nice. And, uh, actually, in, in, it's going to be in uh, units of four, so negative 16, so that everything snaps properly, okay? Take all these, all the docks, or all the pillars here, drag them over. Being super precise is like probably the, the thing I've learned this year. Um, it is the most important thing by far that I've learned. I would say let's set the position to zero first so that they're all zeroed out and then put them up right here. Okay, I don't know why these are not properly aligning. That's okay. There we go. All right, guys. You want to test it out? Let's do it. So we're just blocking out the level. And one of the benefits of having Felipe on my team is he's really good at set, set dressing. Um, so the way our team works is I'm the art director, I'm the level designer, I'm the coder, and Felipe. He takes all of the models that he's created per my direction. 
and I'm not gonna give myself too much credit, he's really brilliant. And then he creates a level. Maybe we'll put some coins under here. All right, guys, so far so good. Let's drop this down a little bit. Let's turn off the lighting and the effects, and let's just drop this down. This is a little much, okay? So let's go ahead and lower the terrain. Remember, we can start at the center, and then just hit Shift, and then drop it down. And then I'm gonna make it smaller so that it flattens out towards the top, okay? There we go. Good. So we'll go over here, grab a key. So I think we should probably flatten it out even more at the top there. Um, so just shift, click, 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 click. Really flatten it. How's that? Okay, a little bit more. Take a look, almost there. A little bit much. Almost there. Okay, keep going. You could use the flatten or set height. Um, we could probably set this to, remember, unit size is a 40. So I would say a four, unit size is a four. So we do something like 44 maybe. Let's try this. Yeah, that's what we need to do, okay? Good, okay, let's take a look. So you get up there and then, almost guys, almost. Good, and then we'll smooth this out here. Is that, is that high enough? That's the real question. We just need to know, is this high enough? It's probably not. We should probably do something like um, 44, 48, 62. Yes. There we go. 62. Climb up this path, and it takes us to this flat surface where we see the building. Okay? Let's smooth out those edges. Increase the opacity and just smooth. Okay. Now we need to fix that dock. So let's go ahead and focus in on the dock here. And just keep on shifting over. And one more. Okay, all right, big old dock is gonna take us up here. Then over here is gonna be that lever, right? And then it'll go up a little bit more. So we're gonna have like two layers here. We're gonna raise the terrain a little bit more. Actually, let's just use set height, 62. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm really bad at math here. S uh, 60, <laughs> 66. 70. I had no idea 70 was a, had a denominator of four. Does it really? 70 divided by four? There's no way. Is it 72? Yeah. Okay, we'll do 72 right here. Okay, let's take a look. So climbing up this path. Right here is gonna be that gate. We're gonna go get the key over here in that garden area. We're gonna go climb up again. And then the, the building will be up here, okay? Let's go ahead and smooth out the edges. Okay. And let's go ahead and put our big old castle, right? All we gotta do is a big, huge cube. So this just lets Felipe know um, when he's modeling, it lets him know, hey, this is how big Thomas wants the building. Size is like, I would say, easily one of the most important things. Size and color, 
more importantly, I think uh, size, what, what, what would the word be? It would be um, it's another uh, 120. Um, so, size contrast. So contrast and scale is super duper important. And that means like fat objects, wide objects, super tall, thin objects, especially for like obviously a very uh, a very stylized game. Is that flat on the surface? It is. We'll do it at 130, 130 or 134, 132. Yep. Okay, now let's have this thing go way up. So all the way into the sky. So that you can't see it anymore. So it just fades up into the sky. Okay. And we'll make a texture that just fades. I think that's a little too big, honestly. We're not going to be able to see it anyway. But this thing is going to be massive. All right. So we're going to just make sure that it's nice and snug at the bottom there. So uh, it would be 334. 335 or 36. Okay, I guess 334. I don't know why. Why is it? Uh, I think it's just because of the size of it. Yeah, let's make the size a clean number. What's the nearest? Uh, is it 5, 524? Yep. And then 336. Yep. Uh, it would be 332. No, 334. There it is. So it's nice and snug on the bottom there. And now we have this massive tower. So let's take a look and see how this is going to look. Pretty cool, huh? So we'll fade that up. And it goes, goes straight into the sky. Okay, let's take a look at the size of it. Pretty cool. And you open it up. I love it. Very cool. Hey, coming together, right? Okay, um, the next thing I want to do is carve some paths. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of set height. All right. So I can sample the height. Remember, guys, I can sample the height of the terrain by just um, holding shift and clicking. So that is this right here would be 44. So I would say let's just do 44. Okay. So we're going to carve a path at 44. And then we're going to carve a path at this angle here, at this size here, uh, which if I hold shift, click, it's going to be 62. So I would say something like uh, maybe 38. Yeah, 38. That's not working. What am I doing? <laughs> 58 stupid um just like that and then keep going up 64 and we'll smooth it out guys we'll smooth out the paths here in particular this one so we're going to do 40 or 52 here like that okay and we're just going to smooth it out so that we have a nice clean path nice and smooth so we're just creating this very generic, s subtle path. I probably need to go back in time. No, that's fine. Let's see how it feels. Go up the path. There's going to be a gate here. And then over here is going to be that garden area or the... Um, so right here is going to be that cemetery, all right? So I'm going to shift click, and that's going to give us our height. So right here is 61. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extend this over like this. See? So we're making some, making some really cool sort of cliff pieces. The same is true over here, right? Why not? So that you can't get over. So see how we started in the abstract and now 
it makes a lot more sense adding other shapes or adding more detail to the terrain there we go oh my goodness we have 371 viewers today welcome welcome guys it really really means a lot that you're joining me today i'm having so much fun today i love making this game i'm having a blast so today we're having a really good time just putting together the very simple terrain structure and the blocking out of our very first level, okay? All right. So we're going to have cliff pieces over here. I would argue it would be pretty cool to do something like this. So you just want some variability here, okay? Let's hit play and take a look. Look at that. So can you guys slowly start seeing what we're doing here? We'll smooth that out. And we're going to make this impossible to get up, OK? And it currently is, I believe. And then over here, there's going to be that gate that you crawl under, like this. And we're going to make this elevated so that this is a big old platform to go collect uh, or go press a switch, OK? So let's sample this up here and make another cliff. So hold Shift, click. And then just, there we go. I'm going to put it like that. This over here is going to be impossible to get up. Okay, and we'll put some gates as well to block the player in. And then this. So that's going to block in the player as well. We could even do this. Okay. So we're slowly creating something that looks well real um, so let's smooth out the height here i'm only doing smooth height where the path is going to be okay um these edges here i want them to be pretty harsh okay climb up the path there will be a gate on this side over here will be an open or a gate you crawl underneath and there will be a cemetery over here with a switch okay all righty. I want to hit play just to double check that it looks cool. Good. How does it feel over here? That's a little weird. I think it's okay, though. All right. Good. Is this root area too big? I don't think so. And we'll just have an axe. And we'll press the switch over here. There'll be a big old gate. All right. Then we go over here. And I'm going to create some elevation up here, OK? Causing us to do a little bit of jumping, all right? So I feel like what we want to do, sample the height here. So go to set height, sample it, it's 72. So I'm going to do, I'm going to just do a, what, what's a, what is it again? 70, is it 72 divided by 4? Yep, okay, that's that's great. So we're, remember, we're using grid sizes of four. So we're gonna do 72 here, nice and clean. And we're just gonna flatten all of this. I want this to be nice and flat. I'm not gonna worry about the edges though. And I'll tell you why we're doing this in just a sec. So just flatten this up here, okay? And now what I can do is go up by another eight, okay? Because, well, another four. That's my jump height. My jump height is four. 72 plus 4 is 76. And now I can just create very harsh area over here that we have to jump up on. Okay. And again, we can just do this, even go over. See, just clipping it over. I'm going to make it match. Um, over here, we could probably do the same. Okay. The entrance is going to be nice and centered, though. So what I'm going to do is make sure this is 74, and then I'm going to do the entrance right here. Or I'm sorry, 72. There we go. Very, very good. And remember, the key or, yeah, the golden ticket or whatever that you collect to get into the building is going to be over here. So I'm going to go from 72 to 76 to 80. And that's another jump. Okay, I want the player to be required to jump up onto things, okay? 
So we'll do one more up here. We can, again, even do this. Okay. All right. Feels pretty good. Jump, jump, jump. And again, we're going to lock the player in using fences. <clears throat> All right, let's explore. All righty. Welcome, welcome. 354 viewers. I'm so excited. Welcome, guys. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. So we'll go over here. We're going to make this flat, right? The wall flat, but you have to jump up. Look, jump height is nice and clean. It feels great to jump, doesn't it? That's what we want to do. And I can't get up it. That's great. So I'll have to just jump. That's perfect. Okay, guys. We'll have a big old patio over here. All righty. Do, 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 do. All right, you guys want to, um, let's make sure that this terrain data is being stored properly. There's a terrain data asset that is pro it probably just got put randomly. Yep, it's right here. This is a so annoying. We're gonna call, I wish they would name it Unity. I wish you would name my terrain what the scene is. Level one terrain. And we could put that into our terrain folder, okay? Let's create a new folder. We're gonna call these old, these are old terrains. But we also have these terrain layers here that we can just add, okay? Um, so let's go to paint. I'm gonna just do a very subtle texture, paint texturing, okay guys? Um, nothing too crazy. Let's create a new layer. Um, add layer, layer dirt. Can we do multiples? We can't, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, layer grass, grass dirt, um, rocks. We'll need to create a, a sand one. Okay, but for now that looks good. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and really quickly just do some grass painting. Nothing crazy, right? In the blocking out phase, you want to be a little, well, a lot careless about how it looks, okay? Because it's gonna change, right? It's going to change. But I do wanna see kind of how it's gonna look. So I'll we'll have some grass here, grass here, um, but then we're gonna have sand all over here, okay? I'm gonna just go ahead and create that sand texture. I believe we have snow, but we don't have sand. Um, let me let me message Felipe really quick and see what he says here. I'm gonna say, can you send me the stylized sand albedo from that pack that doesn't have normal maps, uh, gmail.com, or my email address. Only if you've already downloaded it. I don't have it. Um, okay, so let's hit play here and just take a look. So it's definitely coming together. Seriously, looks great. So we'll come in, we'll land on the dock. I'm just trying to get a feel for, is this the right feeling? We're gonna have rain pouring down and we're gonna land right over here. Pretty cool. So it's super mysterious, right? You walk up the path. Yep, yep, go over here. So let's start, let's just really quick, um, I feel like I want to dig in this path a little bit here. So we're going to go to raise lower terrain and we're going to use this angular one here um, because I want it to be very precise, very low opacity, brush size, about the size of a path, um, a, a, a unit size of four. You can't see my screen, can you? 
and uh, we're gonna hold shift and just click just to create a dug in path all the way up okay this is always a little risky because you make some mistakes but we're gonna smooth it we're gonna create a path over here and it's gonna take us up to here okay Let's go ahead and smooth in this path, all right? So we're just gonna use the smooth tool. There we go, and by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember that full-time game dev is 50% off for this week, and you're gonna get three bonus courses, totally free, and a free t-shirt, and a shout out tomorrow. Um, we always get new students during live streams, it's amazing, I'm super duper lucky that you guys support the channel. More, only, more importantly, it is really cool that you guys support yourself, because it is it really is a great course, I love the program, and if, if you're in the program, feel free to say hello in the chat. Let us know what you think about the program. Um, for, those of, for those of you who are on the fence, um, hopefully I'm, I'm positive of it. <laughs> My students who show up usually are very, always, always, are very, very complimentary of the program. So if you're on the fence about it, just read the chat, and it might be worth it for you guys. I believe it will be. 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. So be sure to check that out. All right, guys, so we got this cool looking path. Just digging into that ground, look. A very subtle dig into the ground is just creating this cool little path. There we go. Now the majority of this game is gonna be platforming, all right? But this introductory scene, not so much, okay? All right, guys, let's go ahead and, and just put some lamp posts in. We have it's, is it called lamp? I believe we have a lamp. Lamp light. Uh, we have these Art Deco lamps that Felipe created, which are freaking awesome. For some reason, the materials aren't properly on them. That's just probably something with GitHub. Yeah, we're missing the albedo. Always, always, always missing the albedo, right? I don't know why. And so we're just gonna put, that's, that's the wrong one, honestly. I think it needs to be lamp pole. Yep, that's the one. Those are for the interior, I believe. Lamp pole variant, yep. Those are a little small. I'm just gonna put these here just to sort of show what we're looking for, but it's gonna change, okay? Very cool. And we'll just put two more up here. One here, one here. This is just eyeballing kind of how we want this world to feel. It's not gonna be perfect, all right? Those need to be real-time lights uh, and they also need to be static. So let's set it to static and also set the real-time light to be baked, good, all right. We have baking um, that automatically occurs, so that's good. Um, okay, guys, I think I'm ready to, unless he, uh, Felipe ma emailed me the sand. Okay, so Felipe sent me the sand really quick, so I'm gonna download that really quick. We usually push to GitHub, it's just right now, we're like in the middle of working, so, oh, we have some great textures here. Thank you, Felipe. I'm gonna download these really quick. These were downloaded from the asset store. I really only need one. So I'm just gonna copy the one I like the best. I'll show it to you guys in just a sec. <clears throat> I'm gonna paste it into my project folder. And I've seen this happen a lot, guys, on tutorials. I don't know why people do this. Don't be importing assets manually in Unity. That's ridiculous. Instead, just put them in your folder, right? Um, so if we go to environment here, textures, uh, we can create a new folder. We're gonna call this sand. And so this is inside my assets folder. I don't need the rocks right now. 
All I need is the sand. We're just gonna call it sand. That's it, okay? That way we can create a new lever, layer called sand. Um, I'm actually gonna go to my layers here and just duplicate this one. I'm gonna call this layer sand. And I'm gonna make sure I select the proper sand. Hey, we, have, we actually have a folder called nature. Um, so we're gonna go to our sand folder that we just made, drag that up to nature. Yep, there we go, and then delete the sand folder. And now what we can do is just, I believe, make sure we go down to our terrain here. There it is. And make sure we drag in the sand. And we go to our terrain here, and we're gonna add a new layer, sand. There it is. And then we can um, start painting some sand, all right? And we can tweak, actually, let's just be careful here. I know for certain I want this to be a PSD because I wanna be able to edit it. So we're gonna save it as a PSD first. Uh, delete the PNG. So this is the PSD, so we're gonna delete the PNG. We're gonna go to our terrain, our sand terrain, and then we're gonna go back to the sand. Where is it? I'm just gonna type it in. There it is, that's the PSD, okay? So now we can tweak the color of the sand in real time uh, in Photoshop, okay? We'll do a smooth, and then we're gonna do an opacity of 15 and a brush size pretty big, just like this. So now we have this beautiful sand along the edge of our coast. All right, got some sand here. Again, double click it. Now we can just go into, because we're using a PSD, we can now change the colors to match. Look, so if I hit play here, now we have sand, okay? Beautiful. I'm gonna smooth out that incline a little bit. It's a little aggressive. So we're gonna go to our paint or our uh, smooth height. Just really smooth this out. Okay. All right, guys, I think we're ready to, let's paint just a little bit here really quick. Just paint some sand up there as you're uh, traveling along this path. Yep, oh, that feels great. Awesome, okay. So now we can go ahead and start laying out um, the, uh, the gates, okay. We should have these, right? Um, so let's, is it fence? Double fence? Yep. And I, we should be able to disable. These seem a little small now, but I'm, I'm curious if they actually are. Let's hit play. They're a little small. Now that they're in the context of our world, they're a little small. I wonder, let me message Felipe. Is it possible to make the gates eight units tall and maybe 16 units wide? Yeah, I feel like these need to be double the width and double the height, like this. I feel like that's what they need to be, something like that. Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like that's, that's probably what we want to do. Let's hit play here. Hmm. This might be a problem uh, because uh, I want to be able to sort of skew these maybe, but that's, I think that's just gonna be the, the nature of how this is gonna work. Um, could be, how would, we do, how would we do this? Give me your ideas in the chat, guys. Um, 
feel like it would be something like this, you know, where they stack. Hmm. But let's start at the top, okay? I, yeah, gates gates really should only be f on flat surfaces, like soup, like basically flat surfaces. Um, so you can't see my screen, can you? Um, so I feel like what I want to do here, we're just going to block it in for now. And then hopefully Felipe will send us an update here when he has some time. Um, but I'm going to put him at a, um, well, let's, let's figure out what the sample of the, the ground is. Uh, set height. We're going to sample the ground here. It is currently 62. So we're going to put this at 62. Okay. So we're going to have it nice and flat over here, guys. And we're going to put it negative 240. Yes, correct. Okay. So that that's the correct size. I wonder why my snapping is screwy. Hmm. Couldn't tell you. So right here we'll have um, something you can crawl under, maybe like wooden, uh, well, let's think here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we'll put there. I don't know. But overall, guys, that is how we're going to be laying out this level. Um, it's going to be pretty sweet. We'll have gates over here, and they'll just be sort of lining like this. So if I hit play, generally speaking, just to give you guys an idea, it's going to bring us up to this sort of gated section. It's going to lock us in, and then you get in over here, right? So it's going to be pretty fun. Um, probably won't be able to get over there. They'll lock us in until we get up here. There'll be more gates lining this area and this area. It's going to be pretty big, pretty big and pretty ornate. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty stoked about all of that. Uh, just remember, guys, as we wrap up here, there's probably one code left, one code left to join full-time game dev and get these bonus courses. Um, this is a massive premium program, guys. It's going to take you more than two months to complete. You're going to get a free t-shirt. You're going to learn 2D art, but you're also going to learn how to secure funding, learn how to start a game studio from your bedroom, how to get six figures on Kickstarter, how to get six figures from a publisher with just a demo, which is the way I like to do things. That's how I've done it in the past. Um, I have 3,000 students worldwide. And obviously, guys, when I do these ad reads for my courses, it does support father's development, okay? <clears throat> so that's why I do them. It helps me pay my team on top of like selling games actually. <laughs> but also it does support you because you're going to learn 2D art, 3D art. You're going to learn again, how to, how to secure funding from publishers, how to hit the steam front page. You're going to learn C sharp. You're going to learn unity. You're going to go at your own pace. You're going to learn Kickstarter. You're going to learn, uh, all these different aspects of 2D art. And then that bonus t-shirt, massive program, everything I've known and learned in 15 years. Um, you're going to be taught by an actual game dev. And that's the important part. Um, I love when my students hang out in the chat. So if you're a student, feel free to say hello and um, let everybody know what you think about the program if you want to. Um, be honest. That, that would be important. Always be honest. And uh, yeah, click below if you're interested, guys. And I will talk to you later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey. Thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you, and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me, hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right. I'll talk to you later.